Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are well today. I wanted to continue on in our series um, of exposing darkness, and I'm going to talk a little bit today, a little bit more about Halloween and um, why Christians shouldn't celebrate it. Now, I don't want to come off as argumentative. I am simply just sharing and exposing the darkness and ex- and um, explaining why it's not a good idea for Christians to celebrate. Now, once it passes through my lips and onto your ears, that is on you, and that is between you and God, what you want to do with your life. I am not trying to tell anybody what to do and how to live their life. That is not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to share um, the darkness with you guys and share with you that it's not and cannot be just some cute little thing, that there's more to it and more behind it than just a cute little thing. So um, with that, let's begin. So the way the Christian church is going, they are more interested in pleasing the world than spreading the word. They want to bring people in by becoming secular and in turn are starting to accept and teach secular views instead of standing firm in the faith and standing for the truth. They cower to society and the things that are popular at the moment. They have become a popularity contest and a social club where you go to feel good and have your ears tickled. They no longer teach what it is to be saved or how to get to heaven or heaven forbid if they tell you where you will go if you choose to deny Christ. They are afraid of losing people and losing money in their pockets, so they stay away from the important topics and stick with politically correct topics and accept and accepting things of society that goes against God's word. Then If you go against their new age and new ways of thinking and try to stand up for the word of God and try to encourage the boldness in your faith, you are made fun of and made to feel alone because of what you are feeling. Satan has infected the church today. He has turned the church upside down and has has turned it into something so unrecognizable And he has also planted the seeds in the church, causing the church to turn away from God and towards sin. When it comes to Halloween, churches should be the place that stands firm in the darkness and expose the darkness for what it is. The church should be a place that shares what it is and what it means to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Instead, the church is welcoming darkness with open arms. They are compromising what the church should stand for just to make people happy. They are not showing the world what it means to be a follower of Christ or have the love for the world instead of being in love with the things of the world. 1 John 2.15 says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, um, love for the Father is not in them. Jesus' words are not to be confused or to be changed. So many Christians have tried to take out the role of the Holy Spirit and create a new religion, one where you can do what you want, when you want, and not live for God or the Bible or the words in his book, but to live for yourself and make yourself happy and um, make your little world and environment happy. They don't want to... Uh, to make anyone feel uncomfortable with the truth and preach to people how to live for Jesus. They don't want to um, do that. So there was this Christian church um, that held a zombie walk in in their church building last year. And this is what was on their church website in order to get the word out about this event. Come join us for our biggest opportunities of the year to make friends in the city. Over a thousand dressed up zombies will begin congregating in our church parking lot at 6 p.m. We will provide food and free photo booth. This will be a great way to let the city know who we are. And on the website, it has a picture of um, a zombie and the zombie was scaring people. It was like a photo op or whatever. So here's another article that I found about this sort of thing. And the headline says, Churches celebrate Halloween with zombies, dancing skeletons, haunted hayrides, and spooktaculars. And the article goes on to say, 
conservative Christian identifying churches nationwide are hosting Halloween themed events throughout the month of October, some featuring or including Halloween centered sermons and performances haunted hayrides, and costume contests with children and adults alike dressing up as skeletons, ghosts, witches, and other images of death or evil. Chet Gallagher, a missions pastor who formerly served as a Nevada police officer, recently posted a short video of the Trunk or Treat event being held at the Journey Church in Lebanon, Tennessee, pastored by Eric Reed. He said in the clip that he decided to stop and record the video of what was happening outside of the church to expose how absolutely horrific and wicked it can be for these trunk or treat events. Gallagher then walked to a van that was parked near the entrance to show that sitting inside the back of the open van was a life-size skeleton with an inflatable angry ghost attached to the side of the vehicle. He noted that the parking lot was still busy after the event was over. This is in front of a Christian church, friends. How can something so demonic be displayed at one of the largest churches in Tennessee? He asked. Again, all the hurrah on this so-called trunk or treat, and this is a representation. What is wrong with this picture? Gallagher also shared a photograph of a sign nearby Shop Springs Baptist Church led by um, Brother Irvin, which advertised that it was holding a fall festival, which included a costume contest. The church had since posted photos of the event online. One photograph shows three young girls with their faces painted, one with plastic fangs in her mouth, and another donning a skeleton costume with smaller skulls on her dress. Another photograph shows a man with a skull in the back of his Jeep and a ghost hanging on the side. A third photograph shows a mother donning a Wicked Witch of the West costume in reference to the Wizard of Oz, and the fourth photo includes a woman with elaborate face painting in the fashion of El Dia de los Muertos, or the Day of the Dead um, painting. A photograph also displayed a trophy for best costume, which depicts um, a headless skeleton holding its skull in its hands. A number of churches nationwide either host, plan, or host, plan to host, or took their youth to the haunted hayride, including... Um, Chatham Friends Church in Snow Camp, North Carolina, and Stony Creek Community Church in Stony Creek, New York, Fellowship Baptist Church, and Freedom Church. It's going to be awesome. We have we will have a costume contest, games, candy, lots of food, and of course a scary hayride, Freedom Church wrote in its social media page. City Light Benson Church in Omaha, Nebraska permitted its parking lot to be used on Saturday for an area zombie walk as a means to make friends with the neighbors in the city. Over a thousand dressed up zombies will begin congregating in our church parking lot at 6 p.m. We will be providing food and a free photo booth. This will be a great way to let people know who we are. Um, Church by the Glades in Coral Springs, Florida presented a series of Halloween-themed messages called Spooktacular throughout the month of October, including sermons entitled How to Hug a Vampire and Escaping the Haunted Mansion. Services included Hollywood Halloween spun live remakes of secular hits such as Michael Jackson's Scream, performed by a uh, cemetery theme, and George Thorgood's Bad to the Bone, performed with dancers dressed like skeletons. We all have scary skeletons in the closet, whether it's something that has afflicted us for years or something that happened yesterday. We all are looking to escape the haunting that comes from past mistakes. Join us for Escaping the Haunted Mansion as we talk about leaving the past in the past and looking forward to fulfilling our purpose in Christ, the church website read. On October 29th and 30th, church by the Glades also hosted trunk or treat in the church parking lot with admissions being one bag of candy. Last year's ser- sermon series centered on Harry Potter with Hogwarts Halloween theme. The church at Lakefield in Mississippi hosted its spooktacular on Sunday evening featuring costume contests and giveaways for Nintendo Switch. The sermon series for that month is the Halloween theme Ghost, which refers to the Holy Spirit. Spooktacular is a family-friendly friend- event that includes an amazing service, high-energy worship, costumes, game, food, and candy for all kids, the church web- website stated. Compassion Church in Georgia is holding a block party on Halloween night to celebrate our city. It will sim- 
will similarly give a Nintendo game system during the event, as well as a 50-inch television. Passion Church also recently presented its annual Michael Jackson Thriller performance with a Halloween theme that held a separate costume parade for the children. The October 21st sermon was entitled Haunted House, and the costume and the dance party is scheduled for Halloween night for middle and high school aged youth. So, now, with all of that being said, should Christians partake? Some churches state that celebrating Halloween is a matter of conscience and is up to each individual. New Spring Church in Anderson, South Carolina, formerly led by Perry Noble, writes on its website that Christians must not impose our personal conscience issues on others. The Bible doesn't directly say not to participate in Halloween. What the Bible doesn't explicitly prohibit, we have the freedom to remain or to make decisions about using wisdom and guidance from the Holy Spirit to lead us. If we listen to Jesus and do what he says, he will never lead us away from himself, it states. If dressing in costumes and going door to door offends your conscience, don't do it. If it doesn't bother you, celebrate Halloween. Matt Chandler of the Village of Church, Village Church in uh, Flower, Texas, similarly released a video last week in which he op- uh, opened that Halloween is the to most people, probably far less about demons and witches and far more about candy and costumes and fun for the kids. He pointed to scripture in the New Testament about uh, meat offered to idols and said that if one's conscience is pricked, they shouldn't celebrate Halloween, but if one's conscience is clear, they should be able to use the event within boundaries to meet one's neighbors and practice hospitality. However, other sites that Halloween present serious spiritual concerns because it subtly introduces children to evil under the banner of fun or dress up. One mother who blogged about the matter noted that the confusion that the parents create after taking their son or daughter year after year to playfully participate in Halloween events, thus affirming such activities, and then finding themselves needing to correct their child after finding them dabbling in darkness for real. Let's say that you do choose to, um, hang on, I lost my place. (laughs) Uh, Let's say that you do choose the popular road of it's all for fun. Your children accept that and they are completely enjoying Halloween all through childhood. Maybe they even have um, dress up as a witch once or painted blood on their face all in fun. Maybe you'll let them read Goosebumps books and watch a few scary movies too, just for kicks. Then your son comes home from a sleepover and you discover that they have been playing with a Ouija board and some strange stuff happened. How do you respond to that? Your child is confronted in school with tarot cards and she accepts a reading from a friend. She is fascinated and starts playing with them herself. She reads about how she needs to be um, an empty vessel for the spirits to move through. How do you tell a 15-year-old that it's dangerous when you have allowed her to be involved in an occult holiday year after year? When we blur the lines and we do not give our children the firm direction that they need in these areas, we are giving the devil free access to confuse them and mislead them. Our children are not saved just because we are. They have to choose Jesus for themselves. And... If we tell them by our everyday decisions and actions that the eternal and supernatural realm doesn't have to be taken seriously, they will not take it seriously themselves. Demons are real. Witches are real. And sorcery is for real. There is nothing good or clean or funny about any of it. To encourage children to be involved in such things in any way is surely irresponsible and can ultimately be damaging to their spiritual health. It is indeed true that Christ disarmed principalities and powers and made a public uh, spectacle of them, triumphing over them, but it is bizarre to the extreme to make a joke out of those evil powers, even impersonating them at fancy dress parties is wrong. It completely minimizes that evil power and the power of the gospel to take away that power. If we 
Just join in the world's jokey, festive, celebrational attitude towards the dark purveyors and vehicles of that power. To say that we must be like the world in order to evangelize, it is an awesome mistake. It flies in the face of the numerous Bible passages God's people are to disassociate themselves from evil works. We are people separated from worldly living to live a life of holiness. The late British preacher Charles Spurgeon once exhorted, Brother Christians, modern witchcrafts and wizardy, wizardy are to be abhorred and condemned, and you will be wise to keep clear of them, trembling to be found acting in concert with those who love darkness rather than the light because of their deeds are evil. When you come to love God with all your heart, you will not worship God in ways of your own devising, but you will ask, where withal shall I draw near unto the Most High God? And you will take your direction from the Lord-inspired word. The service in which he prescribed is the only service which he will accept. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, Let us cleanse ourselves from the filthiness and the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So all with all of that being said, it is our job as parents, as godly, Holy Spirit filled parents to raise our kids in the ways of the Lord. It's our job to present the word of God and the truth of God's word to them. If we sugarcoat it for them just because we don't want them to feel left out, we are conforming to the world and we are sending them into the world for Satan to devour. It is our job to protect our children from being devoured by the one who hates them the most. It's not fun and it's not cute. Just because your child dresses up on Halloween and you send him out, if you think that nothing's wrong with that, then you need to check your spiritual awareness and you need to pray upon that because as a Christian, as a true spirit-led and filled Christian, you should feel conviction over that and you should be um, wanting nothing to do with darkness, nothing to do with the occult, and nothing to do with witchcraft. Like I said, it is our job to protect our children from darkness and from the things of the world. And it's our job to raise them in the light of the Father and not confuse them and send them, you know, away into the world, into darkness, and allow them to dabble in this stuff. Just because they're kids does not mean that Satan does not torment them. And it doesn't mean that he doesn't... um come to them in dreams or in the darkness and he doesn't fill their minds with stuff. He hates our children and he wants them dead because they are future believers in Christ and he doesn't want that. So by us letting our children dabble in that, no matter what age they are, by letting us, um, letting our children dabble in the darkness, uh, there are some children that are more susceptible and they will in turn, take that as, let me try witchcraft. Let me try the Ouija board. Let me see what would actually happen if I did that. Let me see what would happen if I read a tarot card or what what would happen if I drank blood or what would happen if, you know, especially with their peers, if they don't have a strong foundation from their parents on the right and wrong of God's word and, and to be, to flee from darkness If they don't have a strong foundation, they are being set up for a fall. And we as parents will be to blame for that because we did not train our children in the way that they should go. And we did not train our children in the ways of Christ. So they have no foundation to know, uh, you know, darkness from light. They think that they're just having fun. They don't see it as, or they just see it as a game. They don't see the impact in that because we're not telling them the truth. We're not telling them 
darkness exists and we're not telling them that, telling them that Satan exists and demons exist and if you do this you know this is what's going to happen and a lot of parents uh try to sugarcoat it and try to compromise and go according to the world because of what the world says or make them feel like um, their child is missing out. Your child is not missing out on anything and they won't know any different if you just, you know, don't do it. We don't celebrate Halloween and I know that's, you know, that's on us. We don't celebrate Halloween, but we have also told our children what Halloween is about We told our children about, they know about demons and they know about the devil. They know that um, Halloween is a big night for demonic activity. Um, And our local animal shelter won't even adopt black cats or any animals, for that matter, out until after October, usually until November 2nd. They won't even adopt any animals out because they're afraid and they know the darkness that's out there and people are sacrificing animals to shed the blood to their uh, father, Satan himself. So if the animal shelter can have the wherewithal to know that uh, demons exist and that they'll be sacrificing animals. Why can't we as parents have the wherewithal to know that this stuff exists and our children are the most vulnerable? They're the ones that are going to suffer the most. So with that, I love you guys and I will talk to you tomorrow.